Hello everyone, welcome to Corner to Corner Racing, round four of season three. We're here in tier one again. It's our second time ever racing in Azerbaijan and we're hoping for a big race here today. 14 people expected as we're just waiting for one more to join, but we will start at eight o'clock on the dot no matter what. Um, even if the one who is expected to join cannot join in time, we will start without them. Try your predictions in the chat. I have it up alongside me and um, we'll get going. So uh, introducing um, to the standings, um, we have Syke who leads the way with two wins off the back, one in Hungary, one in Imola. Can he make it three in a row for the first ever time in CTCR history? That will be a driver winning two races as, or three races. No, it'll be the second ever time in history that a driver wins three races in a row as uh, Lucas Paul done it in season one. He won Belgium, he won Italy, and he won Saudi Arabia. That was three in a row. Can Syke do the same? It'll be very interesting as we just wait for one more driver to join and we'll see if he has he is ready yet. So we should have 15, I think. We got XD Harrison in in time. People we are missing, both Alpine drivers, crucially, are missing today. And same with Alpha Terry. Um, well, the Alpha Terry driver should join now, uh, as soon as he can. And um, we'll just have to wait. So I've sent him an invitation there, he should join. So we're just going to wait, sorry for the little delay, um, just when the drivers having trouble um, with their game, um, they're going to just restart. Just want to get everyone in on time, don't want anyone being late.
so as we just wait some guy has restarted his game I will invite him one last time and we'll get on the way Here we go, he's in, we're going, let's go. Okay, I'll be back in just a second and we'll get going for qualifying. Okay, welcome back to myself. We get going. 15 people in the lobby, hoping possibly for a full grid when it comes to Belgium. I'm sure a few people are avoiding um, Azerbaijan, but as we head closer to September and back to school, back to work for the people that may not have been working during the summer, it's all good because people just have that free weekend and they should be able to race. We got a big green pole in the way of us here. Um, as we look down the pit lane to start, um, the start of round four, the start to start the season, the first part of the season break. It is a big one, and we are hoping for an interesting one. As I just wait for everyone to like load in and get set and then we'll go so there we go um, we'll get all our telemetry up and we will get ready don't need tire um anyone who's in if they could please just give us as i do see movement from somebody i think we'll keep an eye on the williams we'll see i'd, I'd have no idea claren about to make it four out of four gaffo it is a real really big ask for mclaren they've had a fantastic start um four uh three wins out of three so far we'll have to see uh if anyone could let me know in the weather that doesn't always to show up uh looking at the sky it looks like an all dry qualifying but um we don't quite know yet um about the race 
think it can be a fairly fairly um dynamic race around here have to wait and see as tyro is warming up his tires he has a lot of points he has a big point to prove tyro i think he's got pole position now in the last two races but yet to win a race so it shows that the pace is there in qualifying just the race pace isn't quite there sykes the one who leads the way so Sykes has the most pressure on race day but oh has he hit the wall there has he got damage I think that could be damage for Tyro. He's locked up into the castle section. And I think he may have just lost a bit of his front wing. He has, I'm pretty sure. If he comes back around. Yep, so he'll be into the pit lane. So we'll still just keep an eye on him as he goes around these final corners. Doesn't want to hit the wall. But he's tight. SJR right behind him. Um, and we'll have a look at him. Almost everybody is out on a lap at the moment. XD Harrison. Um, Kiamba and Darkness Alorex, the only ones not to leave the pit lane yet. Um, obviously, Kiamba and Cockery making their uh, CTCR debut um, today. But SGR didn't hit the wall in his outlap, so he won't be into the pit lane, unlike Tyro, who Tyro set a lap anyway. So we'll ride on board with Tyro, uh, despite his damaged um, front right. We'll see what lap time he can set as he drops it down a second to go through turn two and generally Baku is one that you can really deal with with a half damaged wing it shouldn't be that bad it's mostly just 90 degree corners as many people say as he comes to the end of sector one generally keeping everything nice and tidy so far and the time he will set is a 135.9 SJR set a 135.2 so he's much quicker and he may be catching Tyro a little bit getting a little bit too close as they get to the end of the lap especially through this tricky sector 2 which all does rely on the only bit of aerodynamics throughout this track we'll see what people have gone for Tyro hasn't hit the castle this time with SJR right behind him we're gonna have to see if these two do have a little bit of an altercation with each other as he heads down to turn 15, fairly smooth enough, onto the final proper corner of this track, turn 16, a 117.1 compared to, we don't know, I didn't switch in time, but positive about this now, although he may have got dirty air through the sector 2, SJR, he is right on the back of Tyro now, which will give him a lovely slipstream all the way down the longest straight on the calendar 2.1 kilometers SJR to the line Tyro to the line he sets a 141.3 but a 139.8 is the time to beat set by SJR Jackie Gabbana with a 117.6 in the middle sector very similar to Tyro we'll see what time he can set yellow flags in sector 1 as it looks like an Aston Martin has retired Jackie Gabbana does fall behind Next was Rando, who goes ahead of Jackie Gabbana. Randro goes ahead and into second place. Behind them, Skifan, P5. Behind them, I think, is Cockery to the line. He goes 141.3. That's a decent lap from him. Finally, it's Emilio, who sets a 142.2. The slowest out of all. Goes P9. If someone's gone straight on there, it was Cockery. And just a bit too much overspeed as Syke sets his lap we missed that completely a 140.1 a decent lap from the McLaren driver as he will line up on the provisional second provisionally uh, on the front row of the grid we're right on board with XD Harrison he's on a lap at the moment as Emilio has retired he's gone wide down into turn 3 and that will be his qualifying over the slowest timed lap so far Emilio Robolino, the, as you can see, oh yeah, you can see the large bits of rubber all over the track from people locking up and Emilio must have just locked up and went straight on. The season one champion could be at huge risk himself of possibly being moved down to tier two because his recent results haven't backed what he was like in tier one in season one. So he may be in trouble. 
will ride on board. Just uh, would, would stay with XD. Very smooth lap himself here. He had a great race in tier two last night. He ended up winning, beating myself, Goran Potner, and Jackie Gabbana to the flag. As someone has gone on, that was Cockery. But so far, XD Harrison has set a relatively smooth lap. And he has a McLaren ahead of him of Psyche on an in lap. Psyche possibly could give Harrison a toe. These blind left and right kings could be so dangerous if someone does retire on one of them. And someone has got yellow flags. I think that was just Cockery going slow. You can see XD Harrison trying to get the slipstream off Psyche, trying to get that extra bit of speed. What lap time will ha Harrison set? It is a 141.3, which puts him P7, which isn't a bad lap at all. Two Magnus retired in qualifying and in the race last night, but he hasn't retired so far this qualifying session. We'll see what he can set as, ooh, a bit of lag. I thought he had a snap of oversteer, which put him off, but it hasn't so far. So two Magnus, as he goes around these final few corners, has kept it relatively smooth. And now on the long charge to the line, it won't be pole position, and I don't know if it'll be a great lap at all, because he seems very, very far back. And his time will be a 142-143 flat, which will put him last of the remaining drivers as he goes wide into turn one. So we we'll keep an eye on Tyro, who's coming out now onto his second flying lap. He'll want to improve and hopefully set a lap without a damaged wing. And we'll soon figure that out. Um, as he hasn't damaged his wing on his outlap through the castle section so far. So we'll ride on board with his p potential fastest lap. But one thing that could be in trouble is the amount of traffic that he may run into. So the only people not to set a time, Kiamba, ex Kiamba, um, he could not set a time. So most likely if Darkness Alorix just, get just gets a timed lap in, he will start from the back of the grid. So. Darkness of Lorax, who's starting his outlap now. Ooh, there's a bit of a pile up down into turn one. Ski fan has to throw it into reverse as he goes wide at turn three. We'll go back to Tyro, who's starting his flying lap. We're right on board with his whole lap, just like we did for XD Harrison. So, drops it down to third for the first corner. Up shifts quickly and should drop it down a second for turn two. Most of these 90 degree corners you are dropping it down the second. Gets up the gears nice and quickly before slowly upshifting to eight and getting that most speed down this second DRS straight of the track. Hits the apex into turn three with the short little burst down to turn four of all this almost completely identical section of sector one. This time he will set a time seven tenths quicker than his first times at lap. That alone will put him, I think, P3 if he doesn't improve on any of the other ones. But he should improve through Sector 2, which most drivers improve so much in. Oh, hits the apex through the castle section. And that was almost as smooth as you'd like from Tyro as he heads down this tricky section from turn 12 all the way to turn 15. These fast flowing corners you just need to get it right and get your line right as you go into the tricky turn 15 you don't want to hit the wall on the far side that could easily damage your wing so he goes down to the final proper turn of turn 16 before the little kinks all the way down this 2.1 kilometer straight to the line it's been a magnificent lap to ride alongside by and tyro as we go to broadcast view to watch him come to the line what time will he set? Will he be sub 140s? We will see. Tyro 010 to the line. It's not going to be pole position, but it's going to be P2 for the Williams driver. On pole in the last two races, but so far not on pole today. Behind him is Jackie Gabbana starting his flying lap. And behind him, I think, is a house that's just coming into the pit lane. Cockery on an outlap. And then behind Cockery is an Alfa Romeo of SJR. What time can SJR set? He's seven tenths down. So he must, or seven seconds down, so he must be about to start another lap. Um, Psych on his outlap. Oh, he's going to be giving Rando a toe, who's four tenths up. 
This could be a good lap from Rando as he's going to get a nice toe off his McLaren teammate all the way down on the run, down to the line. Rando, what time will he set? The winner in Australia does improve and does improve only up to P8. Lucas Paul, he comes to the line. Two tenths up. Goes P3, that's a decent lap from him. Darkness of Lorex. Goes P13 with a 142.9. Not a bad lap from the Alpha Tauri driver. Um, obviously broke his wrist. Um, as told. Um, as Rando. Rando sets his lap. Obviously Darkness of Lorex blo broke his wrist. So couldn't race on the first few races. A bit of someone damaged their wing there. There has and someone's gone wide. It is a Mercedes. It is Mercedes of Cockery. Who's damaged his wing. Going through turn 7. And... That is not good at all. He'll have to just slowly bring this one back to the pit lane. Yep, he has no wing on that Mercedes. That's Jackie Gabbana. He's on a charge to the line. Nine tenths down, so I don't think he'll be setting the timed lap here, but I think if he had enough ER, he has enough ERS, he's gonna be starting another one. Behind is an Alpha Male. SJR going very slow. I think he has no wing. Ooh, what happened to him on his final flying lap? As not good at all. As and the, or Cockery and Syke getting very close together. As Syke is one tenth up. Hopefully he wasn't slowed by the Mercedes down there at turn 16. But Syke with one tenth up on his time should put him ahead of Lucas Paul. We'll see if he remains one tenth up in his time to the line. He's into the pit lane. He must have been slowed down. I think maybe he wants to just get back in and get into another lap. Cockery has DNF'd, so he will start at best P7 if no one can improve. Everyone seems that they will be improving though, so that might not be good for the new Mercedes man. But P7 has seemed to where do you retire it? You probably retired it. Coming into the pit lane, that's not a great place to retire. As Rando overtakes Lucas Paul going into the pit lane. No one on track setting a time lap, although Darkness of Lorex I think has met the barriers down at turn 15 oh he's been disqualified so he will start from the back of the grid the Alpha Tauri driver unlucky in qualifying he's gonna have to do a huge job now in the back of the from the back of that grid so two Magnus has to improve by eight tenths when he comes back out in order to send Emilio down into 13th his first time or maybe his second time no it's his second time reserving in tier one we'll see what he can set no one is out on track at the moment although jackie cabana is who just set a lap time that did improve but not by much so he's on in that i don't think he'll make it back in time no he will he'll make it back in time for one more timed lap and um, if i look at youtube not much going on if anyone can still give me a weather update that would be very handy indeed. Oh, someone is making a move out of pit lane. It's Randro. Randro is first out on for his final flying lap. Now he, if we switch now to leader, we should probably for the rest of this um, you can see the gap between championship contenders and the non-championship contenders we five lads all within three tenths of each other heading down Tyro the closest of them all but everyone is making their way out and Randro is going to be the first I think someone is telling me that there's going to be rain. Um, I think there may possibly be rain for the race. I've been told this by a driver in the chat, but we don't know yet. We'll soon find out. Randro needs to improve. Everyone just needs to improve three tenths um, in order to get pole position. That That is if SJR can't improve. Um, we'll soon find out. Most drivers in the 140s 
well, most drives in the 141s, a few in the 140s, two in the 149s, and then one in the 143s. I think I myself said a 142 something last night, or maybe it was a 141, I don't know. Um, but as we watch Randro come around the final few corners, Baku last game was 100% a controller track. We will see. No, it is dry, a full dry race. So we'll see if that is the same this game. Randro, the only championship contender who is on controller, uh, as far as I'm aware, um, as he heads through the first few corners of the Baku City circuit. Can he set pole? Will he set pole? We will soon find out. There seems to be a bit of a pileup as people wait to set their laps down at turn 16. And everything seems to be smooth. So, XD Harrison and Rando are not going to get out in time to set a lap. Um, if I find out how long is left, as far as time is aware. Randro is two tenths up in the first sector alone. That is a fantastic first sector. Ooh, did he hit the wall? I think he may have. We'll see. It could have been a visual glitch, but that may not have gained him time. We'll soon find out as he heads to the end of sector two. This tricky, fast flowing all the way from turn 12 down to turn 15. Everything seems smooth so far for Rando. He's definitely hit the wall there. Is that going to make him any time at all? We'll see as he heads to the end. He's three and a half tenths up, so he has made time in the middle sector as he heads all the way down to turn one. This 2.1 kilometer straight, as I've mentioned many times before. Will he gain time on this is the question. Has he made adjustments to his setup to gain that straight line speed? We'll soon find out as qualifying is over and Randro 17 gets to the line. And it's on provisional pole, a 139.6, a huge lap. But right behind them is SJR, who hasn't improved, so he won't be on pole. Syke is right behind SJR and hopefully isn't held up. He set the fastest sector two. Can Syke snatch pole off Randro? We'll soon see. He's going to get a huge slipstream. They're right on the back of each other. Syke surely going to be pole position here. It is! Psych is on pole! Tyro is the only one that can possibly beat them, and he is two tenths up. We'll soon find out. So far, it's going to be Psych on pole, Randro on the second row as SJR made a big fool of that final lap, as Tyro is going flat out at the moment. As he heads round the final corner of turn 16, as he finally just is going to hopefully straighten this car up through these fast flowing left and right kinks as he heads on that long long straight down to the checkered flag there'll be no slipstream like Saika from Tyro but can his raw pace do it for him Tyro 0-0 oh no, to the line it's not going to be pole it's going to be the second row it's going to be a Dutch lockout with Saika on pole he had everything to prove the championship leader starts in pole position Tyro in P2 as we finally just watch Turkey Boy who hadn't improved come to the line and still does he does improve he goes P9 what an end to qualifying that was Syke had it all to approve and luckily for him he did prove it Syke on pole Tyro in second with Randro in third SJR in 4th, Lucas Palm 5th, Skifan 6th, Cockery 7th, Harrison 8th, Turkey Boy 9th and Randro, Rando finished out the top 10. Jackie Gabbana, Emilio, 2 Magnus and Kiamba from 11 to 14 with Darkness Alores disqualified and starts P15.
So what an end to qualifying there. Psych on pole from Randro in P3. He'll be right on the back of Psych now. And Tyro has the inside line to turn one. Could also be very interesting. As we wait for the drivers to start their formation lap. And the green lights are on. Well, not on my screen, but they are on theirs. We are underway to start the formation lap here. Um, we're right on board just to make sure that everyone is available. We have everything available. We'll go with gap to leader for the start. And we'll look at the tires. So everyone on the mediums, apart from Tyro, is going to try heat up these hard tires starting at the front they could cool very quickly as he goes down to turn one he's on the hards also Cockery in the Mercedes is going to go long on the hard tyres Emilio and Magnus are opting for the better start with the easy to warm high grip soft tyres they'll need to make up some places because they will be in around lap 5 lap 6 they'll be in very early otherwise everyone else on the medium tyre as no one seems to be having trouble so far otherwise we'll look at positions gained We'll see what happens into the start. Predictions for the race. As I don't think Rando can get into his car, which may be unfortunate. Psych he set a very very quick formation lap and everyone is going to have to hurry up because of the really happy 20 seconds 10 car lengths behind on a safety car so Cockery is going to have to hurry it up here because he doesn't want to have people waiting on the grid for him and it's Magnus must have had trouble because he's been overtaken by Kiamba will be starting from the back as Psyche has already parked his car. Tyro has parked it well. Randro waited a little bit for them there as he gets up and also parked his car correctly. Everyone so far is having no trouble parking their car. Ski fan, the first person not to as we wait for everyone. So, here we go. Here we go to five red lights for the Baku Grand Prix here in Azerbaijan. It's lights out and away we go. Obviously the visual glitch um, not paying us attention, but it's been a great start for SJR. is going to dive down the inside. Psych does well. Randos lost a few positions. SJR, I think, has jumped all of them into P2. Tyro on the hards, as expected, has had a poor start. And SJR has been spun round. And that's going to be a huge pileup back there. Many people are going to be causing collisions as there's carbon fibre everywhere and Rando disqualified. So that's the end of the Australian race winner's race. But obviously with Ghosting Disabled that will happen and luckily we've got out without a VSC. As there's yellow flags into sector one, someone's gone off, that's Kiamba gone straight off at turn three and himself and Cockery on the debut have not been doing well both of them I think without a front wing well no Kiamba does Cockery does not but it's been a smooth sailing for Syke who's already got a two second lead to Randro behind Lucas Paul may be back he's on the podium he's in P3 with Stefan right behind us people who've had poor starts have been Tyro and Emilio Tyro went around the outside into the castle section there as the VSC has finally been deployed. What a hectic start with Darkness and Lorax making the most of it. Up eight positions, he's shot his way up into P7. Super start from the AlphaTauri driver, Tyro. 
from P6 to P8, a bad start, maybe a bad choice to go on the hard tyres. Doesn't have wing damage, so he will carry on. Emilio does, and so too, obviously does Cockery. SJR doesn't, Magnus does, XD Harrison doesn't, Cockery does, and Kiamba does, or doesn't. So, we'll see who comes into the pit lane, but so far everything is clean. Um, oh, Jackie Gabbana gained a few positions from the start, but he's into the pit lane with wing damage, which isn't good at all. So we'll see what tyres they will soon go on to, but it's not a safety car, it's a virtual safety car, and that'll soon end right now. No one has picked up a drive through penalty, which is great to see. Psych getting a good restart. He's kept that two-second lead as many people are into the pit lane. And Darkness Alorex is one of them, but he's came out in a good position as Cockery has retired from the session. He's retired in the pit lane, so that'll be the end of his race. Bad debut for him. Uh, lap two, he is out of it. But obviously no safety car retiring in the pit lane. Two Magnus is out ahead of Emilio, who is safe to say had the worst start out of everyone. Or, well, that would probably be Tyro. SJR, although spinning uh, and being many laps behind, is in P5. And is that two Magnus that's gone off into the barriers and lost his wing already? Or has he just gone straight on? I hope he has just gone straight on. He has. He's just trying to warm up those tyres. So SJR, I think in the end, hasn't even lost out much. He's lost out two positions despite spinning. Although he is 16 seconds behind the leader, which isn't good at all. We'll switch to interval to see who has DRS. And Lucas Paul is staying within Randro and will be in the DRS as it will start now, as when Syke crossed the line for the star lap three. <coughs> Everything's been smooth, smooth sailing. Uh, one thirteenth through this race. Um, lap two of 26 as we start lap three. Psych sets the fastest lap up. Randro is when they're truly gaining here, just ever so slightly. Him and Lucas Paul are pulling themselves along as there's yellow flags at the end, and I think it's Darkness Alorex who's had trouble and has gone off into the barriers and slams into the Tech Pro barriers there down at turn 16. And we'll have to make another adventure into the pit lane before the lap ends. As oh he's off, he's gone. You didn't realise that you cannot go there that most likely will be a safety car we'll soon find out it's not it's only a VSC as Magnus slowly goes by he found out just himself there that you're gonna have to wait son and um, you're gonna have to lift when you don't have uh, a front wing going around those corners but that's the end of Darkness Alorix's race. So we've three DNFs, well, two DNFs. Cockery DNF'd in the pit lane. Darkness Alorix has retired on track um, and has slammed the barriers with no front wing um, on the main straight. And the VSC is out for the second time this race, which shouldn't be an issue. Uh, should get the car then moved quickly. Should be able to get back on the way, hopefully by the end of lap three and get DRS enabled as soon as possible. We want to see some racing and DRS is back enabled and the VSC has ended. Turkey Boy has got a good launch on the VSC. They go side by side, possibly down to the castle section. Someone's going to have to back out here and it's going to be the Ferrari of Turkey Boy who's going to back out as they head down there. But one thing to keep an eye on is Lucas Paul. He's gaining on Randro, but at the moment he's too far back and even with DRS, he's going to be way too far back to make a move. SJR, 10 seconds behind his teammate Ski Fan who's just keeping up with the podium sitters at the moment, but as is now, it's smooth sailing for the top three. Uh, and both Alfa Romeos still in solid points at the moment. XD Harrison in P6. He is quite far away from everyone. He is, or SJR is quite far away from everyone. He's seven seconds to XD Harrison, 10 seconds to Ski Fan. Um, as at the moment, Lucas Paul is getting a little bit closer to Randro. We'll keep an eye on that gap. As of now, everyone's quite single file. This is the only two that are very close to DRS. We'll keep an eye on Tyro because he will be gaining quickly on Jackie Gabbana as his tyres start to wear. Lucas Paul's right on the back of Randro and I could see possibly something being lined up on the run, on the run down to turn one. But as of now, 
Okay, and just side by side as the gap is gaining to Syke. Syke better not think he's all too clear for this race so far. He has two wins on the bounce, wants to make a three and equal Lucas Paul's record of the most um, of three wins in a row. Um, and so far he's on track to do that, but he's going to have to stop being gained on by Lucas Paul who had a snap of overs there coming out of the final corner, but he's within five tenths now anyway and his setup must just be suiting straight line speed a lot more than Ranjo as he heads on the way down to turn one six tenths in it but with DRS that gap will gain massively as someone has gone off that's Jackie Gabbana who's gone off and caused yellow flags as Lucas Paul has to back out will switch to Jackie Gabbana who has lost a bit of his front wing there coming out of one of the corners two magnus has retired in the castle section that more than likely will be the first safety car race as emilio has just passed through there you know they could get that cleared up quickly enough because psych still a long way from psych to magnus he's just straight out of session tyro sets the fast lap of the grand prix as he starts to gain on kiamba and no, it won't be a safety car. So everything has run in smooth so far. There's been a few VSCs, but no safety car so far. Despite having two DNFs on track, one led to a VSC and Magnus, luckily he must have DNFed somewhere off the track, because otherwise that's usually a safety car. Randro. Oh, he's been overtaken by Lucas Paul. When did that happen? Must have happened on the run down to turn three. I didn't even see it happen, but Randro will stick close to Lucas Paul again. But that gap to Psych with these two battling is just going to gain and gain and gain. So we'll have to see which one will pull into the pit lane quickly. But as of now, it seems that Lucas Paul is getting further and further ahead of Randro. And that gap will probably be out of DRS soon enough. Listen, the loneliest person at the moment is Emilio. He has had one of the worst races so far. Even Jackie Gabbana has come in for a wing change. Or has he come in for a wing change? He's still on those three laps off. He hasn't. He's going to deal with them until these softs wear. So maybe Emilio may get back a bit to the points. We'll soon find out. Otherwise, everyone's gone. So smooth. No, Tyro, right on the back of Kiamba. This is surely going to be the first overtake we're going to see on camera here. Tyro has DRS he's within a tent now he's getting very very fast and he's just too quicker Dan Kiamba the lap younger tires helping out Tyro just a bit he came into the pits on lap one he's up in the P7 on lap six as Randro and Lucas Paul still battling it out but everything so far so good for Syke as SJR is slowly gaining on Ski Fan Ski Fan's doing a good job here just to stick close to Randro and Lucas Paul he wants to keep what he's doing obviously retired last night and um, hopefully doesn't retire today he's had a very very smooth race so far Jackie Gabbana is into the pits to get off those sauce he's onto hards for the final 20 laps of this race now he will be coming out ahead of Emilio but Emilio will be a lot closer to him this time and um, both on fresh mediums we'll see who's going to be closest Randro must have made a mistake there in the middle sector. He's dropped off to Lucas Paul, which has given Lucas Paul just that bit more clean air to work with um, as he starts to gain on Psyche. Tyro approaching his next opponent before the 15 second gap to SJR. He is within DRS of XD Harrison. As XD Harrison is trying to just get out of his slipstream. But now it's within six tenths and five tenths and it's gaining, it's gaining, it's gaining. And by the end of this lap, I am sure Tyro will be in P6. We'll soon find out. DRS or ERS is being enabled. As both of them have almost the exact same ERS at the moment. XD Harrison pulls into the pit lane for his first pit stop on five lap old mediums. And has picked up a five second time penalty for speeding in the pit lane. So it hasn't been a great lap. A great race so far for XD Harrison who won yesterday. 
uh, he's into the pit lane and will come out just ahead probably of Jackie Gabbana in the Red Bull. So Tyro's into P6 and it's 15 seconds until he reaches SJR but obviously a pit stop ahead meaning Tyro, well he probably will still have to go on another pit stop um, for the hard tyres as the gap from Lucas Paul to Psych is still gaining. I thought maybe we could get a different winner but as of now it's looking like Psych is going to win again. He is four seconds ahead. I don't want a commentator's curse on him, but he looks like he should ease free for a victory. Everyone is spread out at the moment, so I don't see, I don't predict um, any sort of instance overtakes or crashes unless someone just generally makes a mistake. And someone has made a mistake, and it's XD Harrison. That was great timing for me. XD Harrison has retired, but his car is still moving. Has he retired on track? I think Harrison has retired manually there. I'm going to have to request that footage. That could put him in real trouble. Absolute. Yeah, unfortunate for you, Brandon Clark. Um, I don't know actually which driver you are. Uh, I'm guessing you're Cockery. Um, but um, yeah, uh, it is unfortunate, and we hope you can go again. Um, heading down to um, Belgium in two weeks' time. So the gap is now five seconds to Syke and he's going to be the first to bring him into the pit lane and maybe try something different as I think Ski Fan is actually starting to gain on Randro. Now Randro has said it himself personally that he needs to win this race and as of now it's looking like it's only going to be P3. He's keeping a relative gap to Lucas Paul but Lucas Paul doing an excellent job considering it's only his second league race on the game. He missed Hungary, he missed Australia, he was here for Imola but struggled and ended up DNF and in P12. But at the moment is sitting comfortably in P2. As Tyro has gained two seconds in a few laps there to SJR. And with those fresher tyres, it's getting a little bit closer each lap. We have 17 more laps of racing ahead of us and we have 10 remaining drivers. We'll soon find out if we'll have 10 remaining drivers in 17 laps time. But as of now, everything is smooth sailing for Syke, the person with the fastest lap at the moment. No one with penalties, luckily. Fastest lap is Tyro, who has obviously made a pit stop so far. People who haven't made a stop and are yet and are still have to are Kiamba running in P7, a great race from someone who didn't even set a quality lap um, and has gained seven positions off the start. It'll be a quality driver today. If Kiamba does finish uh, but hasn't made a pit stop yet. SJR P5 with Ski Fan in P4. Randro P3 and Lucas Paul P2 and Psych P1, the other one's not to make a stop as Jackie Gabbana into the pit lane one last time has been overtaken by Emilio and will be lapped by the race leader of Psych. But you may as well stay in the race because both of them, um, all these people that he is being lapped by are still at the pit. Randro, oh jeez, I am. I am abysmal here because I've just missed an overtake there from Randro and Lucas Paul. These two battling now for P2. 
and I've missed it. But Lucas Paul could strike back here. Can we get a really good overtake on camera? No, we can't. Let me just keep an eye on these two because these two are very close to each other. I didn't think they'd make an overtake. Lucas Paul had about a two second gap. But these two constantly battling. Is that Jackie Gabbana that's gone? Looked like the Red Bull had just gone off. He hasn't. He's kept it straight. Um, but Jackie Gabbana's back onto those mediums he had uh, on the first lap. And I don't think they're going to go all the way. Unless he can somehow caress 17 laps on the mediums. We'll soon find out. Lucas Paul and Randro are very close to each other. And hopefully I do get to see an overtake for the podium. Or not for the podium, for P2 uh, in this race. As there is yellow flags in sector 2. It's Jackie Gabbana. Must just be going slow to let through ski fan for the blue flags. Um, but Lucas Paul is a little bit further away from Randro than he was on previous laps. We'll see when they will bite and come into the pit lane to make the first pit stop for the medium runners. It's been nine laps smooth so far from them as Lucas Paul heads down the straight and gets DRS with eight tenths. But Rando, Randro with loads of ERS at the moment and is doing a splendid job of keeping that. Lucas Paul may not just be keeping that ERS as much as he's burning it down this street. He just really needs to stick with Randro as Randro isn't burning it at all. 75% ERS as we head on to lap 11 of this Grand Prix. We'll see how much longer these guys can go as Turkey Boy has got by Jamba for P7. Turkey Boy could have possibly got a podium if Faze McBot didn't take it off him. Last race, Faze McBot has then been removed from the league along with the Mercedes second driver of Jinx after um, poor sportsmanship uh, in the chats. So Turkey Boy will hope to get a podium eventually. He's sitting in P7. We'll switch back to the battle at focus. Lucas Paul and Randro. looking for P2 as Syke must be loving this because he's had one of the smoothest races so far he hasn't been overtaking yet overtaken yet he has been in P1 the whole race and if I were him with a seven second lead you can let everyone pit ahead of you because I don't think they'll get a strong enough undercut and unless there is a safety car to spice things up it looks like he will win this race but Syke is into the pits early Randro will join him and Lucas Paul for the first time since season two takes the lead of a race Randro and Syke both dived into the pit lane along with Ski Fan SJR is in ahead of him so Alfa Romeo are double stacking so Tyro will jump the Alfa Romeo drivers but we'll see now how smooth this double stack will be will it be costly for SJR as he comes into the pit lane he was held up slightly <coughs> but it's been a relatively smooth double stack there from SJR may lose a bit of time to Tyro but as of there it seems pretty smooth but one real loser actually is Randro Randro who was held up by people coming into the pit lane and has dropped behind Tyro obviously behind Syke and behind Ski Fans Ski Fans came out ahead in the Alfa Romeo and is net P2 at the moment that is interesting a great job from the Alfa Romeo at staying where he was. And SJR came in and gained a huge amount of time on Randro. And we'll soon find out whether that will be costly or not. Tyro is on these mediums. And if he does manage to bring these home, well, he deserves more than 25 points. Because that is going to be a heck of a job to bring these home most of the races. There's yellow flags into sector one. It's Kiamba. kiamba has gone off. But luckily, does well to just take the escape road. Does not damage his wing and will carry on down the straight to turn three as we'll keep an eye on Lucas Paul Jackie Gabbana has unlapped himself but may need to lap, be lapped again Lucas Paul will come into the pit lane 
Oh, he hits the wall. Is that damage to his front wing? We'll soon find out. I don't think it is. I think he's okay. Maybe it's just a visual glitch. He's onto the hards. He has to do one lap less than Rando. And we'll keep an eye on Rando, who's coming down the straight. It's looking like Lucas Paul's doing everything right. Ski fan. Obviously, Lucas Paul not coming into the pit lane. Means that he will get a huge undercut there. <coughs> Luckily, also stay ahead of Tyro. So Tyro and P3 closing, closing up to Lucas Paul. But Lucas Paul in a comfortable P2. And now a long, long way away from Randro, who is gaining on Ski Fan on the run down to turn three, but is not gaining enough. And will sit in P5 for now. Ooh, Ski Fan's hit the wall. Randro will get many closes. Ski Fan has limited ERS. Randro has 90%. He wants to start using a bit of it. Maybe he may have to just sacrifice a lap here and sit in behind until the final straight we are midway through this Grand Prix and most drivers have made a pit stop I think everyone has made a pit stop so far other than Turkey Boy oh no Turkey Boy did he made one at the start didn't he he did everyone's made a pit stop so far so Turkey Boy gonna try bring those tires to the end I don't know if Tyro will or if he'll come into the pit lane soon we'll soon find out we'll watch on board with Randro Gaining on Ski Fan and just waiting to make that move to get up into what is, well, net P3. Uh, well, as long as Tyro does pit as predicted. Tyro, very close to Lucas Paul here. Oh, could this be P2? He's not even going to get in the slipstream. He's just carried on on the left hand side and with DRS open, Tyro set up. Must be no aerodynamics at all. And literally just straight line speed. He easily headed past Lucas Paul there. And on 12 lap all mediums, it's up in the P2. Rando also, Rando also gets by. We missed that. We are looking at Tyro instead. And now has a three second gap to Lucas Paul. Other than, and I think he was half a second ahead. Lucas Paul, obviously master of Monaco and possibly the master of the the low speed corner tracks will be right alongside Tyro this whole lap and maybe just gets those tires heated up and maybe they just weren't heated up there on that on his first lap and that's how Tyro overtook him but Tyro, oh huge snap of oversteer from Tyro there those tyres are screaming at him. 12 laps on those mediums are not going to help him whatsoever. As Lucas Paul gains them all the way down to turn 15 as they head down to the final corner. Before the few kinks down the straight to turn 1. Lucas Paul 6 tenths behind. And how far in front will he be as he heads down the straight? They get closer and closer each time. And with DRS it should be an inevitable overtake. Both relatively the same. ERS be right on board with Lucas Paul. DRS opened. ERS being used down the inside. Lucas Paul 73 is back up into P2, back up to where he was. But the gap to the lead for Lucas Paul is now at 12 long seconds. As uh, Syke is going to cruise to one of the easiest races of his CTCR career and will equal Lucas Paul's record of three race wins in a row but we'll soon find out if he will because obviously there is still 11 laps left as Tyro is starting to fall behind and Randro is starting to gain on Tyro the tyres aren't helping Tyro at the moment and Randro has got those hards heated up and ready and will be right on the back of the Williams driver now oh he spun and he's hit Randro and Randro's out oh that is huge Rand Tyro's picked up a penalty he spun Randro's out safety car is out 
Oh no! Tyro is lost. They're coming out of the castle section. He's spun and Randro hasn't reacted. He's crashed. He's out. The safety car is out. And one of the potential championship contenders has now lost a potential 18 points to his tally. And what an end to the race we will have. Tyro with a 5 second time penalty will be able to go in and change his tyres now and possibly serve that penalty. But it's heartbreak for Randro, who's completely left the session now. It's heartbreak for him. And that will be his race over. Wow. That is one of the... That is almost like a Bahrain incident for him. Obviously, he didn't get any points in Imola last weekend, but that... Twelve second lead is gone. And Lucas Paul will get up right alongside him with fresher hearts. We'll see how this race plans out now with Sype under a bit of more pressure than he did throughout the race. That's gonna be a huge turn in this 12 race championship the fact that Randro our season 2 champion hasn't scored any points well Interestingly, Emilio and Kiamba have decided to come on for the salts, but unfortunately for Emilio, is he has been lapped by the field. So that will be the end of his race, and Jackie Cabana also lapped by the field. He's going to let the rest of the pack by, and more than likely I think will retire in the pit lane, unless he will carry on just to give us more finishers, but... Emilio, even with the softs, is lapped, will be shown blue flags and will just get out of the way for everyone as the race restarts. It's definitely not helping out Lucas Paul because he is not as close to Psyche as he would have liked to be. So as we wait for Kiamba, the last of the drivers that haven't been lapped to catch up, I want to see your end of race predictions. Will Syke be knocked off the potential three race wins in a row? Will Lucas Paul get his first race win since China of season two? Will SJR get his first race win? Will Tyro get his first race win? Will Skifan of tier two get his first race win? He could possibly be a tier one driver at the end of the day if he keeps this podium. 
we'll all soon find out as we head to the end of this race Kiamba hasn't catched up so we won't get going till lap 18 So Kiamba has catched up, but we still have one whole lap with the safety car. Okay, so as we wait for the safety car to get around the end of sector two and the start of sector three, our only safety car of the race, um, in fact, um, Randro will only pick up one point, unfortunately, and Syke, more than likely, is going to have a chance to uh, extend his advantage we'll soon find out safety cars in this lap psych already has that one second lead but as soon as Emilio moves out of the way for the other drivers we'll soon find out whether he'll be under the pressure or not we'll ride on board with Lucas Paul to see how good his getaway is obviously he can't overtake Emilio until the checkered flag which is also crucial so we want to hope that Emilio gets a good start too and possibly even and they get on the way Lucas Paul or Emilio hasn't got the start he had wanted as SJR Psych, three second lead ahead with Lucas Paul in P3. He's dropped behind. Turkey Boy had an aggressive start and a very aggressive start indeed. He is up in the P4. Kiamba in P5. He's going to try to go around the outside of Ski Fan. Ski Fan doing his job to try to hold up drivers at the moment, but at the moment everything seems smooth. But SJR finally gets a chance to show his pace at the front. Will he gain enough on Psyche to get the run and win the race? We'll soon find out. Seven laps to go now. With Lucas Paul on the back of SJR, but not for long. Psyche must have been packing this track for too much because he's already gained a three-second lead. Turkey Boy is right on the back of Lucas Paul. He'll be fuming because he wanted that podium from last weekend. He'll want the same as Emilio has retired out on track. That will be. So it's 
sect it's a yellow flags and sector two as we wait for Emilio to finally just retire his car. Says Jackie Gaban is only two seconds behind, but I'm pretty sure yeah it's a minute uh, behind. Um Otherwise, things seem smooth. Turkey boy right in the back of Lucas Paul. Lucas Paul's falling away to SJR. And SJR is kind of maintaining that gap to sight. We'll soon see if that gap increases ever more as we head towards the final laps of this race. Turkey boy in P4 on the fresh mediums. He's right in the back of Lucas Paul, and I think DRS has re enabled this lap. So if he can, maybe just with those fresher tires, obviously Lucas Paul with more ERS, if he can with these fresher tires just get close enough to get onto the podium and maybe even chase down the leaders, it'll be really, really crucial for the for the championship to see if he can. Well, DRS is enabled now this lap, but. With limited ERS, it's not going to really help him. Aston Martin driver of Kiamba has had a great race though. Well and truly driver of the day. From, I think that was P14 all the way to P5. And if he stays ahead of Tyro on the fresh softs, we will soon find out. But they will be wearing soon. And we'll keep an eye on that gap. But the gap from SJR to Psych is slowly, slowly going up. But if it's going up at this rate, towards the end of the race, Psych will win. So Sykes is going to have to make a huge mistake and at the moment, looking at him right now, doesn't look like he is going to be making any mistakes. He hasn't made a mistake all day and he deserves to win more than anyone else. It's who will deserve this podium because Turkey Boy is gaining that, is using that ERS like no other. Lucas Paul and SJR kind of just sitting in behind as Ski Fan has picked up the first three second time penalty of the day. He is, oh, and he's hit the wall. There goes his front wing. And that will be, no, sir, a safety car. It'll just be him into the pit lane. So we've had six retirees and one disqualification. Who, well, Rando never started the race at the end of the formation lap, but just came into the pit lane. Ski fan is doing so well, running net P3 before Tyro came in but now has dropped all the way to P7 and with a broken wing will stick on the softs and maybe go for a fastest lap for his team Tyro got by Kiamba as his half started to wear and Kiamba who must have known that ski fans into the pit lane is going to come in for probably some more softs to try set the fastest lap of the race Lucas Paul and Turkey Boy have kind of created a bit of a train behind SJR and don't seem to be quick enough for um, to overtake, we'll soon find out. So the gap to Psyche is now increasing. So obviously things aren't going as planned for SJR when he got by Lucas Paul. It was an aggressive overtake, but it was a good overtake in the end. Um, done well to start the safety car and get ahead. As both Ski Fan and have come in for new pit, new um, tyres and we'll be going for a potential fastest lap. The lap time to beat was set midway through the race. 
and it is a 143.1 by Tyro, definitely beatable, especially by Ski Fan, possibly by Kiamba. We haven't seen a quality lap from him. We will see them as oh he's using his ERS. So maybe he isn't going for a quality lap, he's just gonna use these soft tires. I think Jackie Gabana will probably come in this lap to try set a fastest lap, we'll soon see. Soon see. No, he'll probably come in lap twenty-four, sorry. The gap is now five seconds to psych as Turkey Boy is battling with Tyro now, because Tyro's getting much closer now to Turkey Boy and his mediums are wearing. Tyro's hards definitely aren't. And with both with limited ERS, but Tyro with the better run and DRS should be able to get the move done. He does, and now will hopefully chase down a podium for Luke with Lucas Paul and SJR. not using that ERS it means that he will just keep his percentage in good shape you know keep that P2 it's down to Tyro on whether who will be P3 will it be Lucas Paul again or will it be Tyro Lucas Paul does have DRS but Tyro is gaining he's too far away to make any sort of move Ooh. Lucas Paul had a bit of a struggle going through turn one there and Tyro now with Lucas Paul with no DRS Tyro could line up a move here and he's renowned for his good exits and both derating though Turkey Boy is a big train here SJR Lucas Paul Tyro and Turkey Boy are all creating a bit of a train here which obviously has happened because Syke is keeping that five second lead and it's going to level the record with Lucas Paul for most races, one in a row. <coughs> Ooh, and Lucas Paul's gone deep and he's struggling with those tires and Tyro, obviously I told you, those lap younger tires are gonna help him out through this section of the track and Lucas Paul seems to be crumbling under the pressure here. You can see the oversteer, you can see the poor lines through the corner and you can see that ERS being used as Tyro does have just a little bit more and Lucas Paul already derailed him before the straight Tyro will be licking his lips as he comes down to the final corner as they head on this long as I said once again 2.1 kilometer straight down into turn one through the kinks he goes he spun ended up taking out Randro and that may have helped him out that safety car because he's pitted he's got onto fresh rubber and Tyro gets up into the podium for the first time since I think sector one of lap one where he crashed into oh as Lucas Paul did he hit the barriers there he may have and it may line up possibly a move for Turkey boy had hopes of a podium but I don't think he's gonna get it but Tyro is back up into the podium places and we'll see on these next few laps, well, next two laps, if he's going to get close enough for a Dutch 1-2 P2 finish. That we'll soon find out. is gaining already on SJR but you can see SJR he's not using that ERS he's gaining it well and he should be able to defend this lap is the only lap really that Tyro can attack so unless the fresh rubber can do everything and the DRS it doesn't seem like he will be able to as Jackie Gabbana is fair play to him saves in the race he's picked up a penalty though isn't going to help out 
his reputation, but generally he's had a good race in Tyro. Yeah, he's just a bit too far back to SJR. SJR slowly just using his ERS now, wants to get out of that one second to make sure that Tyro does not have DRS. But we'll soon find out now as he gets to the detection zone from second behind. So yeah, it'll be no DRS for Tyro down this lap, down this straight, which means that he won't be quick enough and able to overtake. So we have seven DNFs. No, six DNFs only this race um, compared to the few that there were in Imola. We've got eight finishers and we have most of the title challengers um, finishing in the top five, obviously. Ranjo, my heart goes out to you. Absolute heartbreak for him crashing into Tyro and for Tyro then to go and finish P3 just hurts him even more. But SJR at the moment is still yet to score a point and it looks like his first point will be P2 in Baku. We'll soon find out as we head to the end of the race. Tyro is within a few tenths now. Is within um, the one second DRS now but he won't have the breaking zone of turn one to help him overtake so as we watch Syke come round the final corner he hasn't been overtaken today other than when he was in the pit lane he has led 25 laps out of 26 as he head round the final corner Syke from Netherlands in the McLaren he won in Hungary he won in Imola and he's going to win in Baku and equal the record for most races won in a row Syke wins the Azerbaijan Grand Prix extends his lead at the top of the championship and will step on the top step of the podium it will be S Jr. in P2 with Tyro in P3. Lucas Paul, so unfortunate. No podium for him. Turkey Boy in P5. Kiamba will come round the final corner. He's not up on his time, so he won't be setting a fastest lap. Uh, I don't think anyone improves on the fastest lap. We'll take a look now. No, Tyro will get the fastest lap. Kiamba comes home P5 before Skifan crosses the line for P7. And that is it. So, Syke wins the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. S Junior in P2 with Tyro in P3. Lucas Paul in P4. Turkey Boy P5. Kiamba P6. Skifan P7. Jackie Gabbana P8. Emilio P9. Ranjo P10. XD Harrison P11. 2 Magnus 12. Dark Solorix 13. Cockery 14. And Rando in 15th. We will ask, I think it's Kiamba. Um, Tyro and SJR to join a party and we can talk about the race
So we have been glitched into another race, apparently. So it looks like that's what we're going to have. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to do our interviews here. So we will add... SJR. Gonna wait for hopefully a few people of the podium or maybe just even one to join we'll soon find out about that Hello, so we're just going to wait to see if anyone else is joining, um, if not, uh, I guess it'll just be you. Yep. Right, so we'll just get this over with because it looks like nobody else is um, is joining. So um, obviously you weren't on the podium today, but you've had a fantastic race. Obviously didn't set a lap in qualifying. Um, or did you set a lap? Was it or was it someone else? Oh, that, that is unfortunate, but obviously the race you made up some fantastic positions and you've gained eight positions. Uh, tell us about your race and what happened and how, how you've gained so many positions. Obviously, a great uh, a great race from you. Um, 
a great drive all the way up to score crucial points for Aston Martin, who haven't got um, as much as they'd liked from the lineup they got at the start of the year. Um, obviously, you've Belgium up next after the season break. Uh, how are you feeling for that? Yep. Thank you. So uh, it looks like we have uh, SJR in the party. So um, can you hear us? And is your voice on share? Yes, sir. All right, Grant. So um, obviously that's um, P2 for you today. Uh, you qualified P3 and was unfortunately unable to set a lap at the end of qualifying. Can you tell us about your qualifying and what happened? Yeah, so my first lap in qualifying was a very good one, I thought, and then uh, the last run, I hit the wall in the exit turn one, which just, like brought me five ten seven, so I just backed out, and uh, I couldn't. I just didn't bother continuing really. Yeah, and I think you, I think was it you that um, had a toe for Psych, which managed him to be able to get pole position. <laughs> that looks bad. I didn't mean to do. It. it was an accident. Like I was just, I was on a slow lap coming into the pits, and then like Psych just appeared behind me. I was like. I just yeah. Mm. Yeah, obviously it was a chaotic start from uh, my point of view and it was you that um spun out at turn 2. I don't know if you were if you collided with another car or if you just lost a rear end. Um can you tell us what happened there? Yeah, so I got I got a really good start at the line like literally zero wheel spin. I was so happy with it. So and I was able to get past Randro and Tyro who was on the hards who got so much wheel spin. And so yeah. I got past the two of them into turn one, and then going into turn two, I got clipped from behind, which forced me to spin. And then <clears throat> that kind of, uh, I had rear wing damage the whole race, so literally I couldn't catch up to like Psych at the end. Ah, uh, so I, I see. Keep Tyra behind me, so yeah, literally it was so hard to drive. Yeah, because obviously you set an amazing qualifying lap, considering that was only your first lap. It still managed to set you um, P4, and then yeah. obviously you still do did manage to do a. Um, outrageous comeback to get back up obviously that last safety car really did help you out and there was obviously a few issues in the pits when you came into the pits it seemed you double stacked with your teammate were you confident in that or was it a complete accident that uh, still actually managed to pay off yeah i didn't know that was happening uh until i saw him in front of me but i didn't i wasn't held up too much i'd say i lost about a second and uh i wasn't held up for ages so it was grand it was a fairly fast pit stop it was like uh, uh the pit stop was 1.9 seconds, so I was very happy with that. Oh, well, that's that's obviously a, a good thing to happen. Um, obviously, I don't know if you know or not, but um, Tyro spun out at the end of the castle section and yeah. Randro crashed into him, and that's what caused the safety car, the sole safety <coughs> car of this race, um, very fortunately. Um, obviously, that's what got you back into the race, and you had an outstanding restart going from, I think it was, P5 or P4 all the way up into P2. Tell us about the restart. Yeah, so well before the safety car, I, it was such a boring race. Like I was just like it was like a 10 second gap ahead of me, and then like a 10 second gap behind me, and then my engineer just screams in my ear. There's a yellow flag ahead into the cast section, and then Tyro and Randro just in the middle of the track. So I passed them and I was happy. Uh, and then at the restart, ski fan was a legend and let me bike, so I was his teammate, and I was catching him most of the race. Uh, and then I saw Emilio was kind of uh, kind of screwing over Lucas Paul into turn two, so I took advantage of that. Uh, I think he, he went he went straight on into turn two uh, into the runoff, and everyone obviously yeah. went by him, and then he eventually ended up retiring for the final few laps. Uh, obviously, you told me about the rear wing damage and why you couldn't um, overtake Psych, but at the end there, Tyro he had a bit more fresher hards than the rest of you, and he was um, he was slowly gaining. Which were you confident there? Obviously. I, I was spectating, I seen you had a lot more ERS than him at the time, but would you say maybe one or two more laps he could have had you? Probably, yeah, but the plan, yeah, the plan was to save my, my energy for the last couple of laps just to make sure he couldn't get me on the straights. It's impossible to overtake like in the middle sector, so it's just better off saving my energy for the, the main straight, really. That's all. Yeah, obviously, a uh, fantastic race for you, um, and finally your first your first points uh, of the season. Do you think a possible late title charge could be on? Obviously, still eight races to go and anything can happen. Can you take this form into Belgium next week or two weeks? Uh, I hope I can. It's just so... Uh, yeah, a lot of my results this season have been as just because of incidents or mistakes or whatever, but if I keep up the form I had today, I, uh, I should be able to hopefully bring it back, which I plan on doing. 
All right. I was thank you there. Um, that will be the end of the interviews. Um, obviously we couldn't have the two Dutch of Tyro and Syke in, but that will be the end of Baku and the end of the first half, the first third of our season. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed for those that have watched, um, and we'll see you in Baku or in Belgium. <laughs>